Hey everybody, welcome to today's lecture on assembly drawing tutorial. Um, we're going to be going over making an assembly drawing using the assembly we put together in our previous lecture. Um, all those files should be up on Blackboard for you to get at um, in the PowerPoint, the lecture PowerPoints folder. Um, so let's just uh, dive into it. Um, so this is just going to go real into the specific steps. So I'm going to switch over here to my SolidWorks view. All right, so we've got this assembly. Um, last, in our previous lecture, we brought in these hinges and these screws. Um, we did, we made holes for the screws in this part um, using an assembly feature um, and holes, hole locations based off of the hinge. So if we move the hinge, the holes move with it. Um, and we also made an exploded view, which you can explode by right-clicking and hitting explode. Right-click, click collapse, and that should all go away. You can use the model you made in that class if you're following along, if you want. Um, you can also just download this model and work with that. Um, so we're going to be making an assembly drawing using this. Um, and it'll be a good example because we're actually using some assembly level features, and we'll talk about um, the importance of that to an assembly drawing. So I'm just going to start a new drawing made from part or assembly. If you come here to this little drop down, it'll automatically assume the model you had open before is the one you want to use in the drawing. So that can be super useful. And I'm going to go grab the sheet format real quick. OK, so I'm just going to start off with a standard SOLIDWORKS drawing. It's going to ask me what size I want, and you'll see my my uh, client's sheet sizes in here. Um, and you're likely not to see our templates in here either, so you're going to want to browse um, and then go to where those templates are located. Um, you should be able to download them from Blackboard. There's a specific folder just for sheet sizes. So if you'll give me a moment. Probably can't see my download screen. It only captured strictly the SOLIDWORKS and no pop-ups. But if you click on the browse and then navigate to the sheet format, Hit OK, and you should be looking at something like this. I'm using an Imperial B size here. Um, Imperial, since it's in English. And the B size is just larger, and generally I like to use that unless the part's very simple. Um, and assemblies are almost never simple. You could probably get away with an A size for this one, but I'm going to use a B size. All right, so here it's all feeling pretty familiar. Um, your assembly drawings are going to feel a lot like your part drawings, with a couple little exceptions. Um, and we're just going to throw in that standard three view that we were seeing in the PowerPoint. If you look at the PowerPoint, they've got a front view, you got like a front view, and then like the top and right view. So we're just going to use that. Going to bring in this front view here. Um, and if you click away in that, in that. Uh, and that pane goes away before you can grab the, uh, or you can, sorry, before you can grab the drawing, there's another way to handle that. My computer's being a little laggy here. Sorry, folks. Um, let me see if I can figure that out. All right, well, looks like I'm not going to be able to Get that to stop lagging. But if you uh, if you get a front view in here, um, you should be able to come up here to this pane. Um, if you're if this drawing views pane goes away, I think this view palette should bring it back. If you want, um, if you want to use that, personally, I usually just grab model view from up to the left here, and that will ask you what model you want to use to uh, make the view. 
once you've got that all selected, you can click next. And you can bring in another view. Okay, and I'm just bringing in the same view there. We only want to bring in one base view and then we want the rest to be projected off of it. So I'll show you what that means. I'm going to delete this view. I don't need it. I just want one of them. So projected view, just like with the parts, you can click projected view. It's going to ask you to pick a model. So you pick the model, it'll start projecting to a relative to where your cursor goes. So is uh, having a heck of a time recording this and projecting this. Okay, so there's my top view. There's my right view. And voila. Now we've got our standard three view, just like we wanted. All right, power over. So we've got this. Um, well, we don't actually quite. What I'm going to do real quick is uh, switch back to this. And I'm going to make the style of this view. Once the properties load, I'm going to make this hidden lines removed. And that's more what we're looking for. Come back to here. And that's our standard three view. So now we're going to try importing dimensions. Um, this is something that we were we tried on the part side, um, and it's something you can do in your models. I don't usually do this, so there might be some small hiccups um, and little caveats to it. But you can click on this Model Items tool, which I'm showing SolidWorks here. You can come up here to this Model Items tool in the upper left. If you click on that, It's going to ask you to pick a drawing. I believe the next slide actually has some more information on this when we get to it. Um, I'm going to pick only assembly. Click this one because I we're just pulling in the dimensions for uh, this mate, I believe. Let's give it a try. All right, cool. Ah, and you can see here I'm actually in millimeters instead of inches, so I'm going to update that real quick. All right, now that we're in inches, you can see it brought in these uh, these inch dimensions here, just like I wanted. come back to the PowerPoint, you can see that's what we we're looking for. So that's going to bring in, um, I think it only brings in distance mates. Um, if you select multiple views, it'll try to pick the right view to put them in. I knew I just wanted these two distance mates, and they're the only distance mates in my assembly. So by clicking on this, this view, it brings in all the distance mates, which is just these two. Design intent, assembly level dimensions. So in an assembly drawing, only as the assembly level features are dimensioned. Showing component dimensions on an assembly drawing would be redundant. Double dimensioning should always be avoided. What that means is when we're looking at our drawing, the information present on our drawing should not be repeating information given on our part drawings, or that is per the definition of the part. So I shouldn't be calling out 
shouldn't be throwing dimensions in here to to call out the size of this hinge you know like this this is not a thing that we need to be checking at the assembly level by the time we get to the assembly this hinge should have already be checked should have been already checked and produced um, and we should be trusting that um, if we get to the assembly level we're not measuring that we're only checking things that are done at the assembly and one of those things is we're positioning these hinges um, something that i do tend to dimension on a top level drawing and something i'd like to see i'm not gonna remove points for it missing but i might give extra credit for you including it is to include an overall um, theoretically somebody could have already could already calculate this um, if they had all the dimensions already but sometimes people on the floor just want to know how big should this thing be when i get done and since this is technically derived from other things um, in that case you could you could make an argument for that one not needing to be but these are going to be i'm not used to solidworks running this slow these are going to be technically derived dimensions um, or reference dimensions so what that's going to look like here is once i get this one down here Okay, I should be able to select these dimensions. Any idea where I saw it works? And then adding these parentheses, something we talked about but we didn't really show. I'm actually going to update the uh, drawing format. But adding the parentheses is a way to indicate on a drawing that this dimension is already defined by something else. Um, in which, in this case, the size of that door, that hatch, that's defined by the drawing for that hatch. Um, the distance from the top of that hinge to the bottom of the hatch, that's defined by the two distances of the thickness of the hinge and the thickness of the hatch. And so those are technically derived. You could make an argument that how far the distance from, oh goodness, that's not what I wanted to oh. Um that the distance from the top of the hinge to the bottom isn't implied because you don't know that those things are coincident face to face. Um, but I mean, how else is, it's clearly implied that that's what's going on here. So personally, I don't, uh, I don't buy into that theory, but or to that um, ideology there, but your boss might. So keep an eye out for that. All right. So that's a long winded way of talking about um, assembly level dimensioning. Realistically, you shouldn't have a lot of it, but um, things that matter at the assembly level, you've got to define those here. All right. So back to the PowerPoint. Um, adding an exploded view. Um, this is a pretty uh, outdated slide here, what we've got here. Um, you can see this like old, like Windows XP style window and stuff. Um, I will show you what that looks like in the modern view. So let's, let's hide this PowerPoint real quick. I'm gonna minimize it on my side. 
Let's add an exploded view. So what I'm going to do is come to my view layout, to grab model view. And the first pane is just going to be asking me what model I want to pick. I only have the one model open, um, but if you have multiple, you might have to pick. Um, so I'm just going to pick this one, hit the next arrow. Um, and it's defaulting to an isometric view, which is what I want for my exploded view. Um, and so here I could have selected this box before I put the view down to make it an exploded view um, before I did anything. You can also just go into the drawing properties after, which are displayed immediately after you paste or you place a, uh, a view on a drawing. I've got to scooch this over. And I'm going to come back and select this drawing, drawing number five. And here, we can come up here, and you can see this referenced configuration. This is something we probably experienced on the homework recently, um, that drawing views can be different, configure, or based on a specific configuration, and you can change that. Um, we only have one configuration in this case, but if you look in the configuration tree for the model, which I will snap over to now for the sake of clarity. Come in here, there's this configuration tree, and you see this exploded views in the configuration tree, like we did in the last lecture. Um, so it's not actually a separate configuration, it's just tied to the configuration. Come back to the drawing. Okay. We can show in the exploded view. And here, we only have one exploded view, so there's only one option here, um, and that defaults to where we want it to be. Um, with one exception, I rarely show a shaded view. Um, some people might ask for that. Um, if you wanted to show it, because you got all kinds of cool textures and surfacing in there, you, you're allowed, but realistically it's mm, a little unprofessional. A little, it doesn't look technical, I guess. Um, but in this class, I'm not going to knock points off for it unless you're being... Uh, deliberately obtuse, but I don't suspect any of you are doing that. All right, so that's adding a view in an, ex an exploded view. Um, and their view here is actually diametric. Um, I prefer to go isometric in every view, but that's just me. Um, something they don't have here is exploded lines, an exploded line uh, view. Um, that's something we, we looked at in the last class, I believe is adding this exploded line sketch um, and I will add that I'll ring that wrap back around after this and do that so that you can see what that looks like um, and that would just show this a little better I think it's pretty clear what's going on here but um, for added clarity once assemblies get a little more complicated you're going to want those exploded lines so now we're going to do a whole call out um, and I believe what they're doing here, I think, is just a note. So they just typed all of this in. I think we can use the whole wizard information there with the whole callout tool, and we don't have to remember anything, which is great, because the whole point of this tool is to make our job easier. So we'll zoom in here. And then if you go to annotations, there should be a whole callout. If you click on this whole, Bam. Um, so this gives us a lot of the information. Something that is, uh, this, that's, so that's good, but you can see here it's times four instead of times eight, when we really have eight of these holes. Um, and there's some other information that's not implied there, which is location. Um, and we could call it location specifically, but what we want to drive the, the location and how we modeled it is we want the location of the hinges to drive the location of those holes. I think you'll see the way they called this out in the PowerPoint here is drill seven sixty-fourths holes, three quarter inch deep, to match the holes in the hinges. So that would be why they didn't use the whole call out here. Um, uh, 
uh, I could see this both ways. Um, you could just come in here and say, uh, you could, I'll even remove, you could say, trail to match hinges. That would be okay, with the exception of don't be bad at typing like I am. Um, you could do that. I have this left aligned. that looks a little nicer, you know, not having this like floating out away from the leader. Um, but we still got this times four error. So like, you know, maybe you could, you know, do this again over here, but having it call out the whole size twice, that's a little messy. Um, so the way they typed it in, um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the value in it. Thought I, thought I knew best, but turns out I was wrong. So I'm going to just do the same thing they did. Say drill. Oh, ah, we're not editing this. Here we go. Um, drill 60 ports holes deep to match holes. In hinges. Yeah, and that's definitely clearer. We're not calling out the number because that number is that number should be driven by the hinges themselves. So you know, if we like we talked about last week, if we go in here and modify the hinge so that there's six holes instead of four, um, we want our we want to do as little work as possible to have to make that update and. If we do a note like this, we don't have to come in here and make sure that note number is correct. It reduces confusion. So that's the whole call out. Let's see what else is next. Adding a bill of materials. All right, so um, there's a couple of schools of thought of what the bill of materials should look like. I think we'll be able to get away with just standard SOLIDWORKS bill of materials. Um, so this is one of those other big changes from a normal part drawing that you'll see is um, a normal part drawing we just call out the dimensions for all the machining and whatnot um, have some hole call outs um, and so far it's been pretty similar um, you usually don't have a bill of materials on a part drawing with the exception of some weldments and stuff um, but if we want to model a weldment we can talk about that individually um, I think that might even be a section later on in our class here where we dig into that just a little bit. Um, but generally, you're going to see these in. Oh, is it not showing you guys the menus? Uh, OBS. Okay. So if you go up to the insert, there should be a drop down that says tables. You can insert tables, and that's about like you might have found your design table there before as well. I mean, you can click bill of materials in there. Another way to find it is if you come to the annotations tab, there's this tables drop down here. Click that drop down, and you should see a bill of materials there. It's going to ask you to select a drawing view. I always link my bill of materials to the isometric view, but it probably doesn't matter too much. Um, it's going to ask you for a a template um, and I've got my client's template here Let's see if we can dig around and find a better one okay so I'm not sure what the default for SolidWorks um, build materials is it's probably got less columns than I'd like to see so we're gonna try working with a template that I just made. Um, this isn't going to be. Um, we'll get into all the specific columns for today's lecture. We're just going to use it the way that it is. Um, and if you don't see this template here, you should be able to click on this and it'll bring up a browse and you can browse to this template, which I will be storing in the sheet formats folder on Blackboard. Hit OK there. 
Um, this is pretty standard. Um, you can see here some things aren't quite popping in. Um, all this stuff comes from custom properties, actually. So um, that tells me that the part number in the custom properties fields for these is not filled in. Um, and I'll go show you what it looks like to fill that in. So let's go to our assembly. Okay. I'm just going to do it for the hatch, but you can do it for all three of these. So open up that hatch. Um, you can come up here to File Properties. Um, and you probably can't see that, so let me add that to the OBS. Okay, so you should be able to see it now. This is Custom Properties. Um, this is where your bomb is going to draw its values from. You can also hard code into a bill of materials, and that's bad. Um, you can, you should be able to get away with it as long as you're being going over things and paying attention to the details. But if you're not, then it can really screw you up. So I'm going to call this part number here, and I'm going to say it's. Uh, X E X L for example dash one two three four five six. I'm gonna give it a description. Call this the hatch. Um, and for size, I'm gonna put dash and length. I'm gonna put dash. Um, and I'll get into what you should see in those fields theoretically. Um, in just a little bit. Okay, so if we flip back to here, see all that stuff filled in? Um, we've got our part number, we've got a hatch description. Um, and so, and you see the quantity is automatically generated. It's going to be pulling that from your assembly. Um, and if those quantities are wrong, it either means there's too many parts in your assembly or some things are being excluded from the bomb. Um, and we can dig into how that happens and why. But um, you can see here, it looks like we've got one hatch. Um, I'm guessing these are the hinges and these are the screws based on quantity. Um, and the bill of material is going to be helpful for our next step, which is bring it up here. adding balloons. So these balloons here are another important thing of an assembly drawing. They call out what what thing in the isometric is going to correlate to the bill of material, um, which you know might be easy enough to imply or understand on its own, but we're going to be explicit. If you don't do this, generally, that's a pretty bad drawing. I like to select the edges because it gives me this nice leader, but you can click wherever. Um, you just click the thing you want, and then you click where you want that balloon to go. Bam. And then you can just jump right into the next one. So this goes by pretty quick, you can see. Um, spacing out your leaders is usually pretty good, making sure they're not overlapping with things. Um, you know, increasing readability is just something you're always trying to aim for. Um, so again, that uh, that tool's up here. There's an auto balloon function, and I believe that works kind of like model items where you select how many views you want to have balloons on, and then it tries to throw the balloons in for you. Um, and then you can move them around however you want. I, I personally just like coming in here and doing it by hand. Uh, just so that I don't have to try to predict what SOLIDWORKS is going to do with the balloons. Um, but that's just me. Uh, feel free to try that out. You know, let's actually try that out here on camera so that we can all, can all witness what that looks like. So if I delete these balloons, select this view. Well, I'll select auto balloon first. You can see here it looks like it just threw them in for me. 
Um, and personally, I don't think this is the best place for these balloons. I like them on the isometric. Uh, so let's see if selecting the isometric first. So you see I got selected because I got a nice little dotted outline box there. And auto balloon. Let's see if that does anything. Okay, so I threw them on there, and it actually looks like they're in decent enough spots, honestly. Um, just drag this over here. Yeah, maybe drag this a little bit out so it's not choking that air, that leader head. Um, but yeah, so that's actually it's pretty nice. So in simple enough things, this can be done. But once you get to a, if you get into an assembly that has 20, dis, you know, unique components, then um, it just throwing them in there randomly can uh, not be so helpful. Sometimes you need to, you know, call things on a specific spot. Um, but that's the auto balloons feature. Okay. So finished drawing, which we kind of have. Um, the one thing that we aren't doing, we haven't done on our drawing, um, which you may be aware of here. Um, and I will. I will, uh, yeah, I guess I can just zoom into it so that my head's not blocking it. The title block here is not really filled out. Um, and so we can right click and edit the sheet format to edit it at that level. We could also throw in notes on the top level. Um, if you edit sheet format, I think, yeah, I don't have any of this coded in here. Um, you can get super fancy with this stuff and you can have this linked to custom properties. And then you drive it from there. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of that. I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to write door, um, the drawing number. So the title is going to be your is going to match your description and the uh, ah. So once I make one note, it lets me make a billion more of that same note if I want, which I don't because I only want the one door. Um, the drawing number will uh, correlate to some numbering scheme you've got. Um, normally, the files I work with are saved as the drawing number, and then the title is the description. Um, so, like that, EXL, I believe, is what I was using. So, if I call this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, seven is like the next number you know, in the scheme. Um, you don't have to worry about this. If you want, you can include it and it'll be some extra credit. Um, I will show a rubric of what to, what's gonna be extra credit and what's gonna be required on Wednesday for your midterms. Um, generally, things that are important here, I wanna see a title and I wanna see your initials and a date. Um, everything else is entirely uh, entirely optional for now. Uh, it won't be on the final project. We will we'll be looking for specifics on those drawings. You can see here my font size is a little off, so I'm just going to fill these all in real quick and show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so I've got that all filled in. I changed the formatting on some of the text so that it fit and made the title bigger so that the description is obvious. Um, and then once that's all done, just hit OK. All right, this is the exit sheet formatting button. Um, if your views disappear and you can't figure out what's going on, you're probably editing the sheet format. Just that button in the upper right corner is how you get out of there. So if we zoom to fit the sheet here, you can see this is our completed drawing. Um, things I would change, I'd probably space this out a little bit. Um, definitely would want this to be filled in. Um, maybe I'll just, you know, cheater and do that by hand. You can see here it's telling me, well, you can't see. Hold on. So I'm getting this warning when I'm trying to change the a material table um, and it's you know saying hey are you sure you want to you know break this link because once you break it it's kind of hard to put back um, because right now it's driving this from the custom properties um, so personally I would 
tell you to use the custom properties instead um, because the custom properties will drive the description and part number. You can have the custom properties driving the description and part number on your drawings for that part. And then also driving this bill material so that if you wanted to change the description, you wouldn't have to go and change it in two places. You just update the custom properties and reload the parts. Um, but uh, that's up to you about how much you want to, how much running around you want to do um, as far as this midterm is concerned. Um, in the future, I'm probably going to want us to keep these links. Um, but I'm not going to break it right now, but you could just come in there, double click, and that lets you. Ugh, why are you doing this, OBS? Um, and that lets you uh, break the link, type in whatever you want. Uh, all right. I don't think they have anything else for us. Yeah, that's the assembly drawing tutorial. Um, is there anything else to wrap back to? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much everything. Um, hopefully this is uh, helpful and clear enough. And uh, feel free to drop into that Zoom meeting today with any questions you have. Um, you know, if you want to watch this along and I do something that you don't know what I did um, or can't see it, or you have a specific question about it, feel free to pause it. You can jump in that Zoom meeting, you can shoot me and just maybe just shoot a message in the chat. Um, and then if you're working on homework today, you'll please come in. Um, if you have any questions, just drop into that. You should be able to join the Zoom chat from your browser. Um, and you should be able to share your screen, um, which will allow me to be able to see what you're talking about. And I should be able to, you know, we should be able to relinquish control of the computer to me. So I should be able to show you what's going on there. And if not, I should be able to do the same thing on my computer and display that to you. Um, and hopefully that can be a helpful teaching tool for everybody. I've really got nothing else for this lecture. Um, we will, hope, fingers crossed, I'll have my result by the end of tomorrow, is what they're telling me, and I should be able to have class on Wednesday. Um, all the best.